The Class 313 trains in use with Southern are the oldest electric trains currently in passenger service on the British railway network and at a grand total of nearly 47 years old, they'll be retired in the coming weeks owing to the lack of spares and increased maintenance costs to keep them operational. In this video, we'll take a look at these trains on a run from sunny Seaford to Brighton along the Sussex coast as they reach the end of the line. Now let's get this show on the rails. Well, our journey today begins from a not so sunny Seaford, as the adverse weather is really doing its best to dampen the mood. Nevertheless, I'm really optimistic about today's journey. It should be a very good one, despite the weather. The building right in front of us with all the scaffolding is Seaford Station. Seaford Station itself was opened in June 1864 and was originally intended as a through station for a proposed extension to Eastbourne that failed to materialise. It now acts as the terminus for Southern Seaford branch, with all services terminating at Brighton via Lewis. As we admire the artwork within the station building, we can see our train on the station's only platform, Platform 2, which is the result of the island platform removal following the branch's conversion to single track between Seaford and New Haven. Our ride to Brighton is a Class 313 train, which was built in 1976 as the first second generation electric multiple unit in Britain. These trains are derived from the original Class 445 and 446 PEP trains that were originally built in the early 1970s as prototypes, though they did see use in passenger service briefly in the southern region until 1980. Multiple PEP derivatives were developed for use across the UK's electrified network. However, the Class 313 was the first of its kind, seeing widespread use across London and the southeast of England. The southern units were formerly with Silverlink and its successor, London Overground, were used on the North London line until their transfer to Southern in 2010. Great Northern, Southern's sister brand within Govia Thameslink Railway, ran these units on the Northern City Line and East Coast Main Line until December 2019 when the newer Class 717 trains replaced them, but still remained strong on Southern services along the coastway routes. That is, until the end of this month. You may also notice that this particular Class 313 is wearing a rather unique livery. The unit in question, 313201, formerly 001, was the first Class 313 to have been built back in 1976, making it the first second generation electric train in the UK. In recognition of this, the unit was repainted into a modern version of the BR livery all units first carried from new, with slight changes to comply with disability regulations. We can see the contrast between the Southern Coastway livery the units typically carry with the modern BR livery that 201 wears. Which one's your favourite? Please do drop me a comment below with your preference. Right, with introductions out of the way, let's get on board our unit and take a seat. As with most, if not all, UK commuter trains, this train is standard class only, with no seat reservations. Now before we head off, let's check out today's route. We begin at Seaford, on the East Sussex coast, and travel along the branch line through Bishopstone, New Haven and South East to rejoin the main East Coastway route at Lewis after which we then call at Farmer and Moolscombe before stopping at Brighton's London Road ahead of our final arrival at Brighton's main station, where we should be arriving at around 11.30 this morning. Despite the weather today, this should be a great last trip on these old workhorses, and I'm so glad you're here with me for it. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Our departure from Seaford is bang on time. As we leave, we can see the former Platform 1 still intact, which following the conversion of the Seaford branch to single track up to New Haven, has long made this since redundant. Our first station stop five minutes after leaving Seaford is Bishopstone, on the western side of the town. Whilst it may look fairly uninteresting at face value, 
Heading inside the recently restored Grade 2 listed 1938 station building reveals some rather interesting pieces of railway history, notably some surviving posters from the 1980s British Rail days. As a long-time fan of the Intercity 125 or HST sets, I really do wish what it says in the poster still stands today. The day I came out here to film wasn't the best day to show it off, but the station is an amazing photography spot, regardless of whether you're an enthusiast or not. The coastal town views in the background of Bishopstone and New Haven are truly a sight to behold. This is showcased a lot better as the Class 313 below departs bound for Brighton. The unit that we're on now can be seen arriving inbound around 20 minutes later with a Seaford bound service. It will then return here around 10 minutes later to take us on to Brighton. I'd just like to take a moment to say that I hope you're enjoying the video and the journey so far. And if you are, why not consider subscribing to the channel? It really does help a lot and is a great way to support me and my work. Thanks. Now let's check out the train's features. The seats, as you'd expect from a commuter train, aren't anything special, but that being said, they are a lot more comfortable than a lot of the modern variants you'd see today. They also feature foldable armrests at both the aisle end and in the middle of each seat. To be honest with you, the legroom on these trains isn't really that great, as to be expected again from a commuter train. However, no one was sitting opposite me the whole journey, so that wasn't really that much of an issue. Bear in mind these units are almost 50 years old, so there's no air conditioning on board. Instead, there are hopper windows, which you open by pulling the lever as so. The sight of the rather large ships in the background can only mean we're arriving into our next stop of New Haven Harbour. The approach to the station also allows us to catch a glimpse of the former branch to the New Haven Marine long since disused since 2006, but has had a parliamentary service operating there until its official closure in early 2020, so just before the pandemic began. I attended the Class 313 farewell tour organised by Southern a few weeks ago now, which enabled me to travel down the former branch as the Class 313s made the first of their many final runs along the Sussex coast. The line is now used for freight traffic, and the station is inaccessible to the general public on the grounds that it is unsafe. In the past, it would have been possible to catch boat trains here from the UK to France, much like the Dutch Flyer rail service offered by Greater Anglia and Stenerline to the Netherlands. Southern services still use the branch as a reversal point for the limited services a day that terminate at New Haven Harbour, the passengerless practice we witnessed just now. Moving back to our actual journey, we proceed to call at New Haven Harbour and, a few minutes later, New Haven Town, two of the three stations which have served the town over the course of its existence. Right, let's have a walkthrough of our Class 313. As I've mentioned previously, these trains are fairly basic containing the bare minimum required to keep them in passenger service and comply with disability regulations. These trains were heavily refurbished in the 2010s to include passenger information systems and 2x2 metro style seating amongst other things, which is something I actually enjoy much better than the 2x3 seating that they previously had. There are no toilets on board the trains and there are fewer onboard facilities compared to the Class 377 trains they initially replaced, which has made their introduction slightly controversial, particularly as they're used on long distance runs between Brighton and Portsmouth on occasion. Right, and that's it for our Class 313 train. The section of the Seaford branch between Southies and Lewis is a great opportunity for our Class 313 to really stretch its legs heading towards the line's top speed of 70 miles per hour, though the Class 313s are capable of 75. We now rejoin the main East Coastway route to arrive into Lewis. 
This is one of the principal stations on the line, with a total of five platforms serving a multitude of destinations, such as Hastings, Eastbourne, Brighton and London, amongst others. This is also a rather useful link for football fans, which I'll explain why shortly. The platforms which we're arriving in now are for services coming in and out of Brighton. Just adjacent to these platforms are two further platforms for services to Gatwick Airport and beyond towards London. Just over five minutes later, we arrive into Farmer, the home of Brighton & Hove Albion Football Club. On match days, it isn't uncommon for the Class 313s and 377s to operate in pairs on match day special services, with queuing systems in place at Brighton, owing to how busy and chaotic the East Coastway can get on these days. Our last stop before journey's end is London Road, located in the inner suburbs of Brighton. Despite its name, London Road itself is located 400 yards southwest from the station and bears the name Preston Road at the nearest point. Shortly afterwards, we complete the last leg of our journey over the London Road viaduct, an 1840s built Grade 2 listed brick viaduct carrying the East Coastway route into Brighton. It contains 27 arches and was made out of a whopping 10 million bricks. More importantly, it offers spectacular views as we arrive into the city's main station. On that note, it's time to conclude. Whilst these trains are hated by many in the south coast, they do their job well and certainly will be missed after almost 15 years of service on the coastway routes. That being said, they are clearly showing signs of neglect by Southern, with faded maquette and dirty floors. Just as well they're going, hey? Well, that's it from me for now, and welcome to Brighton. Well, despite the weather, that was a nice last ride on these trains. Now it's time to talk briefly about their fate. At the May timetable change on Sunday the 21st of May 2023, the remaining 17 units in active service will be withdrawn, with three having gone for scrap already. The subject of this video, 313201, has already been stopped and is only used on an ad hoc basis as it has very few miles left between heavy maintenance. If you want to have a final ride on the trains over the coming weeks, I'd recommend you go over to Part-Time Spotter's blog, who has the workings and unit allocations of these units. i put a link to the blog in the description below. As for what's replacing the Class 313s, as with the Class 455 Southern used to operate, GTR are once again relying on the Electrostar fleets used by both the Gatwick Express and Southern brands to internally replace the Class 313s on the coastway routes. This will undoubtedly lead to more short forms and timetable cuts, but that's a subject for another time. 313201, as the first production second generation electric multiple unit, was previously nominated for preservation at the UK's National Railway Museum in York. However, owing to the extensive modifications that the unit received with Southern, including the removal of its pantograph and the change in its seating layout, Network Rail Signal Testing Class 313 was instead offered as it retains more of its original equipment and features. I'm going to end the video with the departure of the Class 313 units used on the farewell tour. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank you so much for coming along with me on this ride and if you did enjoy the video please do give it a like as well as share it as that really does help the channel to grow. If you're new to the channel and want to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing as well as enabling notifications. For now, I'm only going to be uploading videos every Sunday at 5pm, after which, in June, I'll return to Friday uploads.
Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.